Hello, everyone. This is the most magnificent bird, Buckbeak, speaking to you today. And in today's video, I'm back at it with some more Dying Light 2. This is going to be part 19 of this current playthrough. And we are going to be meeting up with Frank back at the fisheye because it was mentioned briefly in the last part that he wants to meet with the butcher to try to talk things out and after we do this mission this isn't a very long mission i have some bonus stuff that i'm gonna show you guys after the mission because at this point we are getting pretty close to the end of the game and you'll see why I don't want to start that up immediately so enough of me just wasting time let's go ahead and jump into it shall we if you have injured in the fisheye we have medicine and food for those in need contact us by radio or display a flag on your building Peace. Frank, if you go into the stronghold, I'm going with you. Kid, stop. Sit down and listen to me. You saved a lot of people. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't have been able to warn anyone. But I don't think it's a good idea for you to come. This isn't about Waltz. The stakes are too high. Wait, what, what do you mean? Look. I'll tell you, but this has got to stay between us, got it? Just to tell me. There will be more missile attacks, Aiden. William says most of the central loop will be destroyed. You understand? Is that a threat or a lie? We won't find out unless we sit down to talk. And what if it's a trap? Could be. Hey, listen. At the start of the pandemic, Villador was one of 20 cities to be isolated by the GRE. Do you know how many of them survived so far? None, except for ours. They were all blown up when the virus got out of control. Villador was saved because someone stopped the bombings. And I think it was Williams. I don't trust the Butcher or Walt, Frank. I want to go with you. If things go south, you could use some backup. Okay. I know I can't stop you. You'll go with us, but stay cool and do what I say. Is that clear? Hey. Get moving. You okay? Open up. 
Renegades will be here any minute. Are you sure you're okay? Yeah, I felt worse. I had a drink. You sure you're good to go? I'm okay. I'll be okay. Okay, I, I guess. Ah, uh, there's the slimy cockroach. Where's Matt? He here? Or will he be fashionably late? Matt's upstairs. Waiting. Yeah, come on. Hey, buddy. Good to see you alive. For likewise, Nicholas. Man, wouldn't be if it hadn't been for you, I say. Hell, everyone here would be dead by now. Later, amigo. Hey, Matt? Everything all right? This is fucked, Frank. What is a fucking trap? Could be. We need to strike back at the motherfucker before he burns this city to the ground. See, this is why we're screwed. This fuckhead's just gonna make a bad situation worse. Enough. William says there are more missiles. If he knows that, he might know how to stop them. So, seeing as he's graciously agreed to talk, we're gonna dress up real nice and go to his island on our very best behavior. Now move your ass, Matt. Only a fucking kick his. So according to Colonel, uh, yeah, according to Colonel Williams, he says there's going to be more missile attacks, and what we saw in the last part was just a little test of what you know of Waltz of what he wants to do, but this time, even though Colonel Williams is supposed to be a villain, I don't think he's lying about that. And according to him, this time, it's those missiles, the next time, is going to completely level old Villador. I mean, everyone and everywhere, there won't be a safe place. So, I mean, I kind of understand why Frank wants to talk, but what he don't know is, I don't think Colonel Williams... I don't think he has anything to do with wanting to unleash the missiles. No, it's clearly Waltz. And I truly believe that's how Colonel Williams knows is because of Waltz. So, yeah. So we're going to see what happens. I think it's a trap. I really don't. Something, I'm sure something's going to go wrong. And we gotta go meet up with one. And I think we went the wrong way, yeah. Okay, see, there he is. Yeah, we went up the wrong... We went down. We were supposed to stay up there. Yeah, we're not gonna be able to make that, so let's just walk down there normally. And since we're getting closer to the end of this game, I'm going to talk a little bit more about what I want to play next, potentially. But we'll talk more about that after I get done with this mission. Hey, 
Aiden. You're not going? Sure are a lot of them down there. Dollars to donuts, man. Fucks this up. I guarantee it. Got a plan B? I'll improvise. What if he improvises? Well, don't worry so much. What else is there to do? Oh. Yeah. It was a trap. Damn it, yeah. Frank shouldn't have been that uh, trusting so easily, so. I can't just leave Frank, so I think the truck, we can go after that later. Nah, because I don't know. Let's. I won't leave him. Yeah. The arrow was poisoned. Nothing you can do here. I was right. This was a set up all along. What about Take Margaret? There's a tracking device on the truck. You can't let him get away. Whatever happens, promise me you won't let anything happen to Lawan. Promise. I promise, Frank. Fucking hell. Margaret the healer can help. Give this to her. No way, dude. You let that truck go the butcher gets away with killing Frank. You want to save Frank? Go now. I'm going for the antidote. Stop the car, you hear me? Stop it! Aiden? You there? What's happening? Aiden! Renegades attacked. Frank was hit. Poison arrow. Is he? He'll be okay. I'm going to an herbalist for an antidote. I'm going after the butcher. I'm gonna kill that murdering son of a bitch. No, the one. Go to Frank. He needs you now. I have to. Leave the butcher and Waltz to me. Take care of Frank. Show me the poison. And? Shh. Margaret! You sure the renegades did this? Yes. Why do you ask? Aiden, do you have the antidote? No, not yet, but... The poison's stronger than we thought. Hmm. Frank won't last much longer. I need this antidote fast. Pass me the jar. The one with the green herbs inside. Do you smell it? Same smell. The renegades use curari. It is odorless, not bitter smelling like this one. Just tell me what I need to find. This is sacred violet. You need aquatic herbs to neutralize it. Five pieces are needed to counteract the poison. They grow beneath the waters nearby. Mix them with this before administering it. Oh, we gotta go underwater, it looks like? Okay, let's do it. So we have to find five aquatic herbs 
to be able to save Frank there. And it seems like the Renegades poisoned Frank, but if they did, they used a different poison. Up to this point, I'm not really sure if the Renegades actually poisoned him. It definitely seems like that on the surface, but whoever poisoned Frank with that arrow, they used a much stronger poison than the Renegades would normally use. So, I'm gonna go on a limb and say the Renegades actually didn't, but I don't know. I'm not sure else, I'm not sure who else would want to kill Frank. Um, unless maybe Jack Matt, um, unless Jack Matt hired someone to take Frank out, or maybe the slippery one Rainer uh, tried to have him killed. If not the Renegades, Let's see, I gotta check this map, because I don't know, I got like, what is it? I got four more herbs to find. Of course, they're not gonna show exactly where they're at underwater, just the general location. That's gonna, but talking about the stronger poison that, you know, that poisoned Frank, that, that would be an interesting um, question to ask you guys. Who do you think tried to poison Frank? Do you think it was the Renegades and they're and they are just uh, switching up poisons, or do you think it was someone else? I have my suspicions. I'm gonna go ahead and say it wasn't the Renegades. I think it might have been someone else trying to take Frank out. I'm not going to reveal who I think it is just yet. I'm going to think on it. I don't think it was the Renegades, as crazy as it sounds. I think it might have been um, one of the two other individuals that I mentioned that might have, you know, if they didn't do it themselves, obviously, Jack, Matt, and Juan Rayner. I have the antidote. On my way. Oh wow, we got we got a little over two minutes to get there, but it's not that far. We should be able to get there just in time. So yeah, obviously, um, what I was saying, Juan Rayner and Jack Matt weren't able to pull the trigger themselves, but I bet one of them had someone do it for them. We got plenty of time, so we can just go up the normal way. We got more than enough time. Something odd. What? She said the renegades don't use this kind of poison. 
They do now. Yeah, but why would they try to kill Frank if Williams wanted to talk? Because it was a lie. I'm going to the stronghold. And not with that wound of yours. Someone should stay with him, go on. Fine. Ask Jack for help. He knows a way into the stronghold. Aiden. Don't fuck this up. And that's a promise. And Jack, Juan told me you know how to get into the stronghold. They're not giving us much time, but look. I've got a signal. Good. Follow it, Aiden. They're, they're not giving us much time, but luckily air travel is easier with the paraglider at this point. I I try not to cut the characters off when they're talking. That's why sometimes I'll get ready to say something and then they cut me off. Yeah, imagine if we would have had the paraglider at the beginning. That would have been really great, honestly. Okay, whoa, less than 20 seconds to get to the, to get to the roof. Thank goodness there's a winch right there to take us straight up. Otherwise, it'd be impossible. There you are. Yeah, we gotta get that uh, inhibitor. Okay, so this is, at this point, this is why I'm not going to continue the story in this video because 
This is the beginning of the epilogue. Advancing the main story beyond this point will trigger the epilogue. Make sure to complete un any unfinished business in the city before continuing. And we will start the epilogue in part 20. But for this video, we are not done. And I do have a couple of um, things to show you guys. And I also want to talk about potentially what I want to play after I get done playing Dying Light 2. Now, the next genre of game that I want to play after Dying Light 2 is a superhero game, okay? And I'm not going to make that choice. I'm going to leave that choice up to you guys. There's three options. I'll give you a hint. You'll see the poll soon enough. The first option is this particular hero is my favorite DC superhero out of all of the DC heroes. He's my favorite. The second game is this particular game from Marvel didn't get the it didn't get the attention it deserved because of another game's uh, really bad reputation. And this third option is this game came out in 2018. It's another Marvel game. And then there was sort of a sequel that came out the following year, which I will say the first game in 2018, it was a really great game. And I would say the sort of sequel it's sort of like a spinoff, but sort of a sequel. I don't think that particular game was nowhere near as good as the hype was led to believe. But it's still a pretty okay game. And like I said, that might those hints might not be that hard to figure out as to what particular games I'm talking about. But you guys will see the options on the poll soon enough and... Before we end things, I'm just going to show you guys some cool stuff. So, I'll see you guys in a sec. Okay, guys, I am back. And for this little bit of the video that's going to be left, I'm just really going to mess around. And you can see I have the map all pulled up. And pretty much the whole map is covered in yellow, except for that one little area with red and for the epilogue that's where we're going to be going to the newfound lost lands but however there's a way to get over there and there's a particular reason as to why we're going to go over there because past the red part of the land there's a sunken city that has these crates and what's good about them is they have really unique high uh highly rated pieces of like clothing and weapons and stuff like that and that's where we're that's where we're going to be going now we're not in the epilogue we're not supposed to be over here until we get to the epilogue but we can go over there it's just extremely difficult to get over here and we have to do it by parachute there's really no other way to get over there and we're just going to be doing a bunch of swimming and once i get to a crate I'll catch back up with you guys. Okay, we are back at it. And, you know, honestly, I just didn't think you guys wanted to see me do uh, swimming for like 15, 20 minutes. So I'm kind of cutting ahead. And here we are at our first crate. And the lock pick is going to be hard. And there's even lock picks that go to very hard. And those are very annoying to crack but we can definitely get it it's just gonna uh it's gonna take more than a minute and i'm gonna have to quit here because otherwise we're going to drown if we do not come back up so here we are we got some explosives i think 
Okay, so there's not really a winner in that particular crate, but we have to go to all of them, and there will be different pieces of clothing. It's just really randomized, and we have to go there kind of regularly and just get lucky. Let me just see if there's anything else in there before we go to a different crate, just to be sure. Um, no. Okay, it's empty. So let's try going to a different crate. I'll see you guys over there. Okay, so here we are with a crate. Oh, this is a very hard lock pick. This is the f first very hard lock pick that I have encountered in the game. So let's see how this goes. We might break a couple of lock picks. Yeah, a lot of resistance. Okay, that one was... I'm shocked. That one was kind of easy. Is there any clothes? Let's see. What do we have? Um, uh, first, let's go back up. We'll go back down here in a minute. And we're going to see if we have any clothing items that, uh, that I can equip on my character. Let's see. What do we have here? Um... We have camo boots and a battery. Okay, so that's... It looks like that's an archer build for the boots. So, yeah, let's see if we can find another one and maybe get lucky. Here's another one. We have rations and we have paratrooper boots. And, uh... Now, we picked them up. Okay, so the paratrooper boots is gonna be for the brawler build. Okay, so... We are finding different sets. I want to get a full set for the brawler, archer, the tank, and the medic from these Pacific crates. And I'm hoping to find all of that before I complete the game because I would like to show you what each of the four looks like at its best possible um, tier. Which I think they're definitely the very nicest. And I'm just going to skip ahead because this is what I was doing for probably 20 minutes or more. Okay, so I got done picking through the crates. And I'm going to uh, pretty much show you guys what I got for, uh, I got from the crates. As far as clothes, so let's take a look. So, it looks like here, I didn't get much when it came to the mask. I did get like a, um, a medical mask, but I think I might have already picked that up from a different location. Now, let's see from here. I don't think I got anything from the gloves. I know, uh, let's check out, no, I did get those surgeon gloves there. Let's see, let's go back, um, yeah, the... I did pick up the Surgeon Gauntlets from that pickup, so you're not going to really find that unless you go to this Pacific area that I showed you. And I'm not sure if it's supposed to be underwater normally, but on my version, it's underwater. So, so we did find some Surgeon uh, Gauntlets there. They look cool. Now, let's take a look at the, um, jackets here. Uh, for the jackets, I did get a winter jacket. Although, you know what, I think the winter jacket was from the previous mission. I did pick up another one that looks just like it. And I picked up a leather jacket, which that does look significantly different for the archer build than what y'all are used to seeing. So, we're gonna put that on just in a second. So yeah, there's the leather jacket from those special crates, and that's a uh, number eight tier, a number eight level, and I honestly love that look, honestly. I think that looks so slick. And uh, we're gonna see, as far as like the gauntlets, not the gloves, but the wrist, and also, let's see, what was, yeah, here we go. This is the other one, the Expedition Hard Shell. And you can see that goes up from 8 to 10, but it is a level 8. That's for the tank build. So we're going to check that out.
So this is the Expedition Hard Shell. Just kind of showing you guys what they kind of look like. And we do have some gauntlets here. Let's see. We have um, a couple of hospital bracers. Um, I'm pretty sure I picked up a dragon brazer. Yeah, dragon bracers. That came from the crates. I kind of just skipped around and, you know, I didn't want to show you guys just me swimming only. I'm trying to think, did we pick anything up from the pants? Uh, maybe, maybe not. I know we picked up the camo boots. That's for the archer, ranger uh, class. And then we picked up the paratrooper boots. So yeah, as you can see right there, the gear armor with just a couple of those pieces on is at 39 and not every piece is at level 7 or 8. Just a couple of pieces. And I'm hoping to find, you know, for the medic, the medic, tank, brawler, and ranger classes, I'm hoping to find a mask, gloves, the jacket, the bracers, the pants, and shoes for all four of those classes just to show off, just to show you guys what they look like. And this is going to be the best looking armor gear of the game, you know, as far as the base game anyway. So yeah, and this is what the uh, camo boots look like there. I wonder if there's any way to show you guys better. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to remember, did we pick up any pants? We we might have from there, but those are pants that I've picked up along the way and I just haven't sold them yet for money. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I think we did pick up some archer britches. And then we do have that. That's for the, well, that's part of the archer build. Yeah, so we got a couple of archer uh, gloves. We have some sniper mitts. Yeah, okay, just sniper mitts. Yeah, and the gear armor for the archer is significantly lower. And see, this is what the archer build would look like, pretty much. Except I would like to have some better pieces of gear. I would like to have a better pair of... Uh, better level pair of pants. And then the mask... The mask is going to be significantly different. We just have to get lucky and find that particular mask in those crates. Which we have, I have not gotten lucky just yet. And one more thing I'm going to show you guys is some of the graffiti art. And actually before we get to the graffiti art... I have picked up these uh, saber claws, as you're going to see, and I just want to show you what they do. Like, yeah, see, I think these are cool. I can be like Wolverine in the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so we got those. This is just like a random uh, thing I was doing for inhibitors and as you can see it's so dusty in there it's hard to see so like stealth is out of the question on this one so I decided to be like Wolverine and just slice and dice so it's gonna be kinda hard to be stealthy because it's so smoky in here so dusty so we're just gonna have to slice and dice our way through All right. 
Alright, I, so I just wanted to um, show you guys that with the saber claws. Now, we're actually going to get to the graffiti that I wanted to show you guys. Okay, now, I do have some graffiti art. And, you know, as you're going around the open world, you can collect graffiti art. And, like, some of the graffiti art is actually uh, very cool. And I do have 11 out of uh, 65 I've only only because I haven't really tried to find any and I'm just gonna uh show you some of it. Let's see, here we have uh we have lullaby Hush little baby don't say a word Papa's gonna buy you a mocking bird and if that mocking bird won't sing Papa's gonna buy you a diamond ring and if that diamond ring turns to brass Papa's gonna buy you a looking glass, and if that looking glass gets broken, Papa's gonna buy you a big machete to kill all infected. I like the artwork, it's kind of a twisted, um, you know, the art on it, and, uh, some of the artwork is actually really cool. So that's the first one. Yeah, I just, like, um, there's 65 of them. I maybe should try to find all 65 of them, maybe. And then next, we have the 80s are back, baby. Life is as simple as tape, but it can get complicated. Then you'll need some pencil. Then we have, oh boy, this is a lot here. Um, Shadow of the Night Runners. Night Runners were a highly skilled group of military specialists trained to work in the dark. Frank May, uh, Frank Mayerway was the first man whose body tolerated the inhibitors and he became the first night runner, later their leader. His missions all had one goal in mind, to help the people of the city when revolution broke out, he and his night runner sided with the civilians and played a part in the victory over the army. Frank then built the fisheye canteen, which became a symbol of new life in the city and a neutral place for any faction could meet in safety so long they so long they didn't start any trouble. In the end, the fisheye became a popular, not popular, sorry, this text is so small. The fisheye became a symbol for the ultimate decline of the night runners. Okay. I do apologize. The text is like teeny weeny. Okay, so we have temper, temper, even a sensitive, temper, temper, even a sensitive soul will foo you up if you're not careful. <laughs> oh man, piss off. Okay. I mean, whatever. That's that's what they put in the game. Okay, what do we have here? Mechanical animals don't let go of what makes us human no matter what happens. Don't become a cold, heartless robot. Kind of maybe a Five Night at uh, Freddy's reference? Mechanical animals? Is that what... Is that what I'm getting at? Then we have a uh, skull hammer. Keep banging your head against the wall and you'll break your skull before the wall even cracks. That one's new to me. I haven't found that one. I haven't really tried to find them. Then uh, what do we have here? Crouching monster, hidden biter. Some mo some monsters only live in your head, luckily. Okay, uh, let's see. Run, boy, run! Sometimes we rush around so focused on our work and career that we forget about the world around us, we must learn to slow ourselves down sometimes and truly see how beautiful the world is. Okay, yeah, I like that one. Then we have Plague Doctor. Stay safe 
healthy and in the fight with C-19. Don't know exactly what that means, but I like it. It's creepy, but plague doctors are supposed to be, I think. And we have Hellhound. Once the hounds from hell have tracked you down, you'll have nowhere to hide unless a UV light unless there's a UV light nearby. Okay, I kind of I like that metaphor of the, you know, the hounds. They're supposed to be the infected. I do like that. Yeah, so Maybe, potentially, I'll try to find some more artwork or some more graffiti and read the descriptions for you guys. And right there, Rise Off Your Knees, I already read that one. It's in one of the parts that I did before, so if you really want to go back into it and know what all of that says, you can. Because I already went into uh, Rise Off Your Knees. Because that's a potential, well, I won't say potential, it is spoilers for uh, Dying Light 1. So that's why I didn't initially go over that one. And honestly, I think this is a really good place to stop this part 19. When we get back to it. We will be on part 20, and we will be starting the epilogue. And like I said, I'm going to have a poll sometime after this is uploaded asking you guys what you want to see me play next. And all of the options are going to be superhero games. And I gave you hints as to what those games are. And all of the options are really great games. There isn't a bad game in the poll whatsoever. And uh, yeah, like I said, I apologize if this part isn't as long as the other parts normally are. But I figured I didn't want to start the epilogue in the middle of this part. And we'll really get into the epilogue on the next part. And we might have a couple of parts, unfortunately. But we're really at the end game of Dying Light 2. And that's all I got for you guys for today. I want to thank each and every one of you for your continued support. And just for stopping by. And I am Buck Beak, and I'm going to go fly away back into my nest. Until next time, bye guys.